This video is sponsored by Battleaxe. Make sure you stick around for a freebie. Hey, it's Jake, and have you ever heard of the transformed sandwich? Of course you haven't, I just made it up. We're gonna talk about it in this video, so let's get right into it. I came across this technique while creating the effects of After Effects series, and I figured since there are so many videos in that series, Probably not everyone saw this technique in use, so that's why I'm dedicating an entire video to it. But the whole point of it is to be able to rotate an effect when there aren't any rotation controls. So let me give you an example. The fast box and blur effect, if I bring that out onto this picture of a donut wall, which is making me really hungry, I can blur this out in both dimensions, but I can also change it to only horizontal or only vertical for that kind of directional blur, but I can't do it in any other angle. Now obviously there's the directional blur effect and that will allow me to blur in any direction that I want just like this, but it's not as fast to render as the fast box blur effect. So that's where the transform sandwich comes into play. So the way that this works is you just add a transform effect before the effect that you want to rotate and then duplicate that transform and move it below the effect that you want to rotate. So that's why it's a sandwich, which Technically, I guess this is a fast box blur sandwich since that's the ingredients and the transform is more like the actual bread, but let's not get hung up on the details. What we need to do is first rotate in one direction on this first instance of the transform. So let's just say I wanna make it a 45 degree angle. Rotate it 45 degrees, and then we go to the second instance of transform and rotate it an equal but opposite amount. So I'm gonna say negative 45 degrees. And the image is getting cropped, but that's just because of the repeat edge pixels checkbox. So I'm going to uncheck that, normally you'd want that checked. But what this is going to allow us to do is blur this out in whatever angle we've set this to. So using a fast box blur being limited by just the horizontal or vertical blur dimensions, I'm able to now rotate it in any direction I want. And I can do this a lot more quickly than changing one number and then changing the other to an opposite number just by using a very simple expression. So down here in my layers, I'm just gonna select it and search for rotation. And there's the rotation property for both instances of transform. What I wanna do is take that first value and alter option click on it to add an expression and just type minus, then use my property pick whip to scroll down to the second instance of transform, link it to that rotation and click off. Now whatever this number is set to, this number will be the inverse. So I don't even have to worry about the first instance of transform anymore. I can just rotate this to whatever angle I want and my fast box blur is going to blur in that direction. And what's so cool about this is that it works for absolutely any effect. So let's say I don't wanna blur this out, I wanna instead use an effect like ball action. I'll bring out CC ball action, place it between my two slices of transform, and because it's already set up, my grid automatically is not aligned perfectly horizontally and vertically. Let me turn off transform one and two to show you this is what CC ball action normally does. It creates all of these balls in a perfect grid and I could go into the ball size and maybe turn it down a little bit so that we see through to the background. And actually, I'm just gonna turn that off so it's black in the background. But then if we enable the first instance of transform, it rotates it in one direction and our grid is now aligned to the rotated image. And then we use the second instance of transform to rotate it back. And now my grid is no longer perfectly horizontal and vertical. So I can once again go into that second instance of transform and rotate this any direction that I want, and CC ball action is now being affected by that rotation without modifying my actual image. And this works for any kind of layer. So if I wanted to do this to say some text, let's just turn my background layer back on. I'll type out transform sandwich and just align that to the center with control home. And I'll just copy and paste these effects. And just like that, my text is now getting that same treatment applied. Now this layer is getting cut off. Unfortunately, this is a side effect of just After Effects and the way that it renders vector layers. But the way to get around it is to just pre-compose it. That's almost always the answer. So I'm just gonna pre-compose this with Control-Shift-C or Command-Shift-C on a Mac and I'll call this text. And it's going to force me to move all the attributes into the pre-comp, but that's okay. I'll just double click into there, press E to bring up the effects, cut and then paste them back out in this comp, and now it won't be cut off anymore. So I can again rotate this as much as I want, maybe turn down that grid spacing, turn the ball size up, but now it works with the text just the same way. Now, the original example I gave was using this technique to create long shadows with the Minimax effect. So I'm gonna get rid of CC ball action and add in Minimax, 
And what this effect does, again, without the other effects enabled, is just expand out the alpha and color channels. By default, it's set to color only, but I'm gonna change it to alpha and color. And now if I increase the radius, it's basically going to expand out the alpha channel while preserving those edge colors as well. But I can do this on just the horizontal or just the vertical axis. So if I set it to just vertical, I'm basically growing this out on that vertical axis. So let's just make this really big and then turn on my transform sandwich, which will rotate the text, apply the minimax effect, and then rotate it back. Now I can rotate this around however I want. And if you go watch the Minimax tutorial, which I'll put up at the top card right now, it actually uses a third instance of transform to align that Minimaxed text back to where it should be. And then we use a CC composite effect to bring the original text back on top. It's the exact same color though, so we need to add probably a fill effect right before that to change that Minimaxed color. And then again, using expressions, I show you how to offset that text so that it aligns perfectly no matter what. But from there, you can just have fun. It doesn't even have to be a fill, you could do a gradient. If I bring out the gradient ramp instead of a fill effect and align this to the text, then we're gonna have this kind of gradient looking long shadow, which is super cool. There are just so many different things that you can do with this technique. Like I said, it works for absolutely any effect. If you've ever found an effect that doesn't allow you to rotate it, like grid or checkerboard or anything like that, Transform Sandwich will allow you to rotate it. And you don't have to have any extra layers and do any kind of track mats. It all works right in the effect stack, which is why it's so great. And as an added bonus, Adam Pluff of Battle Axe has created a little scriptlet that allows you to do this with a single button click. So I'm just gonna get rid of everything except that Minimax effect. And and I'm gonna bring up KBAR, which is an extension for After Effects that allows you to have different commands, presets, scripts, all launchable and executable from single buttons. This is completely customizable. You can do whatever you want with this system. And it's a workflow enhancement that I highly, highly recommend that you look into. But I've added this little button at the end here that's called the Transform Sandwich. And all you need to do is have the effect applied that you wanna be able to rotate. Click that button and a sandwich top and a sandwich bottom are added around that effect that you selected. These are just the transform effects, but they're automatically linked with expressions. So I don't have to do anything extra and the rotation control is going to work just like it did before. On top of that, we've also linked up a few other properties. So the skew control works and to make this a little bit more evident, I'm gonna add a checkerboard effect in between my sandwiches and set the blend mode to stencil alpha. So now it's poking that checkerboard through the alpha channel, creating transparency. With that applied, I can again rotate this however I want, but I can also skew it. We've linked up the skew controls to work as well. So you can change the skew and the skew axis, and the initial effect will also respond to that. You can even change the position or anchor point of this transform if for some reason you wanted to link it up, and it's not going to affect the text or whatever layer you're applying it to, only the effects that are applied between that sandwich. And this is all completely free to use. Just check the description of this video to see how you can get this scriptlet set up with KBAR and how you can start using it in your own workflows. But that is the Transform Sandwich. It's one of my favorite discoveries of the Effects of After Effects series. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something and that you can start to think of how you might be able to use this in your own workflows. Thank you so much for your support. If you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so you can be alerted when I get new content uploaded here on YouTube. And thank you so much to all of my patrons I'm grateful to all of the support that you're giving me over there. Check it out in the description if you're interested, and I'll see you in the next video.